Welcome back to Rebuild Rescue. Today, guys, we're here at the rescue hangar. We're back with the 401, and Joe and I are gonna get dug in and get some of this 401 back together. I'm gonna start out by getting the rudder hooked up and the steering, and it's one of the last things that we have to do to make sure all the flight surfaces, all the control surfaces work correctly. Man, I have one side of the pedals out. I'm gonna remove the other side, and we're gonna get them cleaned up and uh, spray them and make them look all brand new again. Yeah, make it look new, because I guess we need, we definitely need some rudder pedals to show the rudder working, so, and it's a good time to get it cleaned up. I think maybe we'll dig in and get them shafts on the ground, um, you know, on the ground. The shafts and the floor all cleaned up and, and everything looking and functioning well. Right, let's get at it. I have been thinking of this day where I got to climb back in the tail of the 401. It's just not my favorite thing to do. <laughs> so I think I'm a little claustrophobic. So uh, so hopefully I can get back here and uh, get these things all back and installed and, and I can do it quickly, hopefully. So we have a bunch of different cables that we got to get installed yet. We still have the trim cables that do come here. We have two sets, one set that goes to the elevator and one set that goes to the rudder. We're not gonna do that today. We are doing the main cables, which are right here, that run back through there, up and up to the top and into the back of the rudder. And they run all the way through here, all the way in the floor, down under the panel and up into the front steering. So it's a really long run of cables and we're almost done doing cables. I've learned so much doing these and um, we're probably about halfway done. I mean, after we get those trim cables on and stuff. And then uh, we do have some more cabling to do when we redo this autopilot, but we're gonna bring a special sim for that. These are really finicky for one to understand. So, um, and we're also gonna, we, we have some guys coming in to do some inspections and stuff next week. So uh, really looking forward to that. See if we can get these uh, cables installed. Hey Joe, come in and play Joe. Let's play airplanes. Hey, laugh it up, laugh it up out there. You guys don't have to be in here in the tail. That's not good. That's why I didn't take these pedals out. Why? Because they're part of the bar. Oh. They're not bolted in like the uh, right side. Well, I guess those will, uh, we'll just clean them up then. Clean them up in, in on spot and. Uh, yeah, because we'd have to take the whole bars out. Yeah, and actually, you know, even for the bottom there, because the whole floor is all coated, I don't even think it's a big deal to, to not up. tape anything off. Because yeah, if we get some paint on there, it's just gonna help protect it even more. Because there's not really, it's a real simple job then. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'd say take the other pedals, clean them up in the parts washer, dry them out, throw some paint on them, get in here, throw some paint on those, and uh, we're good to go. Okay. Joe, can I, uh, can you give me a hand a second, Joe? Yeah. So I'm trying to figure out where these cables run through. Well, there should be two more pulleys up top, I would think. Yeah, so there's four holes up here. Yeah, I don't know where those go. It's big, um, I'll, I'll crawl out and take, I gotta crawl out. Let me look, look at the uh, manual. I'll take a picture of this. In the manual, it doesn't give a clear. No, it doesn't. But see how they're on an upward angle? That's what yeah, makes it. It has to weird. come around these pulleys here. Yeah, so it comes up the rear set, the set of rear holes, hits this pulley, comes down, and then clasps onto here. If you want to, if you stood up here, you, I could, uh, I could pass them to you, and and you could uh, put, you know, put a piece of wire on them, just so they don't fall back down through. If you look right here, that's the pulleys that are up there in the tail. And then these two pulleys here that for detail C are the only ones I'm a little bit confused about uh, where they would be. 
right them bolt holes there are what those uh the pulleys you just had in your hand and what they oh, bolt to i think those are the pulleys that bolt to that aren't they or no these are triangular almost so when i was in the fuselage i looked at one of the trim cables a little bit closer and i found a place where it was corroded through um, a good bit so one of those trim cables if not all the trim cables then depending on how much of a loop that is is, is going to need uh, replaced on the floor there's also one of these and there's a pulley missing it took a little bit of figuring but joe and i figured out the two cables where they run and there's all kinds of like trim stuff and autopilot stuff and we got to make sure that we run this stuff the right way it doesn't really show you in the manual so we did it a few different ways. I got some pictures also from another 401. That's how they go. They go right up through here. Makes it a little bit more difficult to get in here and work, but that's the way they run. And then you got a double pulley down here for your trim. And you got two more up in there. So, uh, but for now, never mind all of this spaghetti stuff. We did find one frayed trim wire that we are going to have to replace. Maybe more. There might be another one, but. For now, we're looking good. We're gonna go ahead. We'll get that all bolted in the back and ready to go. And then we're gonna go ahead and roll up there, hook that up and we're good to go. Got it. Here's the second one. You have them both wired. I didn't wire them yet, I just have them up. All right, I'm gonna hop out. All right, so you got them wired up there. It looks like the one is longer than the other one. So we're gonna have to go in um, inside the fuselage and check all the routing from the back all the way to the front. But that was a great way to get it on the pulleys and a great way to get it in to position and see what we need before we hook it all up. Cause there's also a couple different ways it can route down inside and like everything on these manuals doesn't tell you. So your, your best bet is to analyze everything, look at it. Usually I make some phone calls. We do have two of these same airplanes over at Forward Arrow, um, a county away. And uh, I've had the guys you know, take pictures of it and, and send it to us so we know what it looks like. Um, because there's so many different ways it can go. There's only one right way. What did I just do there? Did I move the pedal? All right, I'm back here in the tail. Here's the, uh, the turn buckles. That, uh, this is where you get your adjustment in these cables. And I'm gonna have to go ahead and pull the safety wire off these. We're gonna loosen them both up. That gives us some play on the other end up there so we can go ahead and get it installed. Right now it's just too tight. But once everything's in place, you got to set the tension on all these anyway. So these have to come undone anyhow, and there's like a whole procedure, and then you end up re-safety wiring them. So let's go ahead and get that safety wire off. We'll get this loose, loosened up, then we get the rest installed. All right, so we got the turnbuckles loosened up and boy, that makes it a lot easier to get these things lined up. But so we'll go ahead, we'll get this hooked up. We'll get the front steering gear hooked up and then we'll probably actually leave them loose for a while because we're gonna have to go ahead and set all the tensions when we rig everything. But for now, this makes it much easier.
All right, so those are hooked up. We're gonna go ahead and we'll move to the front, get the front steering springs put in and cables and hook it to the front bell crank for the steering. And this thing should work again. Right here, these are the tubes that actually get secured inside the fuselage that these springs set in. So these springs actually hook up to those same cables that run to the pedals and that run all the way to the rudder. It actuates a bell crank in the front, which then steers the airplane. The reason they have these springs, now this is like a really, really strong spring, but this gives you a little bit of leeway because you have these cables that are controlling everything. If you hit like a, a bump or a pothole in a runway or something and it jerks the steering all of a sudden, it gives it some leeway so it's not gonna rip your cables, it's not gonna mess up the rudder or anything like that. Now, on some airplanes though, it does make the steering a little spongy, especially like the Cougar. I'm not sure how the 401 feels, you know, as far as at a high rate of speed or anything. So, but it is a stiff spring and it does give you that safety and, uh, you know, it does add a little bit of complexity to it as well. Cable here, cable here, up to the bell crank, gives you your steering. So I went ahead and I lubed up the last two pulleys that we haven't serviced yet with a little bit of coil here, a little penetrant, and it feels pretty good. The more the penetrant, the better. So I didn't like the way that pulley felt, so I thought I'd pull it out and take a look at it. And I'm glad I did. Definitely need some cleanup. It's definitely gonna need a little bit of lube in there. And uh, we're gonna have to check that bearing out a little closer, possibly replace it. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna pull out the one on the other side as well. It was a lot better, but I'm gonna go ahead and clean these up. That's amazing. So what happens is the grease in these things, when they set, they're not moving and the grease just dries up. Got a little bit of crow in there. So many of you guys have entered the Austin Healy free abandoned car giveaway and we really appreciate it. So we're about ready to give it away. Hello? Hello, is this Joseph? May I ask who's calling? Uh, Jason calling. Hey, how's it going? Hey Joseph, how are you doing today, man? Not bad. Hey, I was just wondering, um, did you enter in any contests lately? No way! <laughs> so, no way! Yep, yep. Oh so, my god! <laughs> oh my god! So, uh, I'm standing here in the rescue hangar, and I have this uh, really pretty little uh, uh, Austin Healy. And... <laughs> 
you how you you have no idea how I am excited I am right now. I am driving and I am shaking. <laughs> well, don't don't wreck. No, <laughs> but if no, you do, no, we do have another car for you. So. <laughs> yeah, well, I gotta buy a shirt first, right? <laughs> <laughs> wow, I, you don't know. For the past two years, I have watched every single episode oh, not just man. because of the austin but because i love your content oh thank you man that mean that means a lot to us so uh harrison's here filming and joe is here um up, right guys? now <laughs> and greg's greg's over here watching he thought he was going to oh win God. it so he's a little disappointed <laughs> my wife and kids are going to be so excited nice you have no idea that is awesome i love it i love it so i'm going to shoot you uh some information i'll shoot you my number and uh you know we'll uh we'll get you in this thing and and get it signed over to you and awesome. uh and then you're welcome to do whatever you want with it. I, I, I hope you enjoy it. I hope your family likes it. Oh, yeah. It's definitely going to stay in our family for a very long time. Like nice. I, like I said, for the past two years, I have imaged this car as being mine. Awesome. Like, I have made plans for, like, my kids. <laughs> when they go to prom, they're going to drive in it. That's like, Don't sweet. worry. This car will stay in our family, and it will definitely be cherished. I love I, it. You have no idea how excited I am right now. That's awesome. Well, we appreciate you watching, and we appreciate you being part of the rescue crew. You know, if, if it's not for people like you, we wouldn't get to do what we do. So, um, yes, we really appreciate it and uh, really happy or excited. I really want this to go to someone who, you know, appreciates it, likes to tinker a little bit because it does need some stuff yet. But yeah, uh, no, but it's a fine. great start. I am, you don't know how blown away I am right now. Like, cool. I watched Bikes and Beards, where the car originally came from. Oh, that's I funny. Gentry and Sons, all of them. Awesome, brother. I'm excited brother. to meet you guys. I mean, Sounds I'm excited good. to get to Austin, but I am even more excited to meet you guys. Hey, man, well, <laughs> we, we got a 401 over here that would love to meet you as well, and um, uh, it'd, it'd be cool to connect with you and, and uh, you know, meet you and, and maybe your family as well. All right. I will all right, uh, see you guys soon. Man, so uh, so that was awesome. Uh, Joseph is really happy. That makes me happy. Guys, if you didn't get a chance to win this, we have a Mustang giveaway. RebuildRescue.com. Every $10 gets you an entry. My Mustang, that was my dream car when I was younger. Now it can be yours. Hope some, I can't, I can't wait to give that away. <laughs> It'll be fun. We got to do some donuts in it first, though. Yeah. Sam flew a Seneca in to take me for a flight, but unfortunately landed with a leaking tire. So Steve and I hopped in Buckshot Whiskey to get a tube from Fort Arrow over to York County. Little did I know, Sam was going to be helping Joe with the Kit Fox. What are you working on, Joe? I'm getting tools ready so I can get ready to pull the engine off the Kit Fox. Oh, we're taking that off today? Yeah, we want to get that sent out and get that uh, ball rolling. Nice. How long do you think that's going to take to get off? I'm hoping to have it off in an hour or two. It shouldn't be too hard, right? Because that thing's pretty, it's pretty small and there's not much to it. Yeah, it's Couple super bolts. simple. I'm uh, expecting it to go a little quicker than I'm expecting it to, but I'm trying not to shoot myself in the foot. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> sounds good. So what's the game plan on this? What needs to come off first? Uh, I think I'm gonna do the prop first, then I'll do exhaust, and then we'll get the wires disconnected, hoses disconnected, and uh, the four main bolts. This should go real quick now that Sam's here. Yeah, welcome back to, as my wife says, Rescue Rebuild. <laughs> How long has she been around us? She still doesn't know the name. Speaking of your wife, is your phone dead? Yeah, I think it is. Why, hello there. I don't know where Sam's at. I'm in the hangar working. Why is my wife calling you and not me? <laughs> you didn't answer your phone, she says. Dead. Well, he, he's up here. I kind of uh, conned him into helping us. All right. Bye. Reminds you of your favorite hairdo. <laughs> the mullet. The mullet. All right, so maybe we're gonna spray that and let that soak for a while. Watch, I'm lethal with this stuff. 
Love the smell of croil in the afternoon. <laughs> You got it? Yep. How much water do you think is going to be in here? Did it get you? Yeah. <laughs> you missed the bucket. <laughs> Probably that was definitely, all those anyway. yeah. That thing was brittle. Yeah. Holy cow. Yeah, they don't last forever, and they're just real cheapos, so. Yeah. Cheap it started cheap. to come off, and it just decided it was going to let loose, so. Yeah. To be expected. I mean, all those tubes are, like, hard as a rock. Yeah. So now I need to make sure all these wire colors match up before I just start disconnecting. Like, that is a black to a green with a black stripe so those are our little tags here and one's marked six and one's marked e so <laughs> i think we'll definitely be uh marking the rest of these okay i think that's the last one sure is Oh, nope, there is still one more. I mean, how many wires was that? Not that many, like six, seven? Six wires. Six wires? Yeah. Okay, all those are disconnected. All right, so we got what? All the tubes off, carburetors are off, wires are all marked. What's left to do? Just I have one hose on the other side, I believe yet. And that oh be yeah. It. It's like a NASCAR pit crew over here. I'm gonna soak, hit this one more time with coil before I get to the engine mounts. We'll try smacking it. Hopefully it'll pop free. I don't know who got all this all over the floor. Well, at least it didn't fall in the bucket. Now, just because I haven't worked on one of these before, I'm gonna remove the spinner. Just make sure there's not a uh, shaft nut in there or something stupid. So they're threaded all the way through? I'm not sure. Yep, sure are. <laughs> we would have been being on that for years. You'd think Sam would have known better. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that, that was easy. Wow. <laughs> that has to be the lightest prop I've ever felt. <laughs> okay, you could edit out that entire part of me trying to knock that off the hammer, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm actually just gonna replay it multiple times. Let her drain a little bit. <laughs> what do you want to just spray it all over the floor? No, I got enough of a mess to clean up. <laughs> so I found a spot we're going to need to repair down underneath here on the mount. It is cracked across the top of the mount, so if you pull on the hose, it'll separate. So that'll definitely have to be addressed and maybe just a new weld on there. Cleaned up and welded. Because it wouldn't take much and that would. 
Opry. And that's how you do it without making a big mess. <laughs> Sorry, Sam. <laughs> nice, so now we just have four bolts, right? Four bolts, and uh, then I see we got a volunteer here to help lift it off. Where? Behind you. Oh, Where are you okay. going, Corey? <laughs> Run back here, engine hoist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we. I had a little bit of help for Looks like about we twenty to clean minutes. The floor a little bit too. That was that was a little bit of help. Uh, that was here. It was that was Sam. Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. We were uh, banging on the propeller a little bit until we realized it was threaded into the thing. <laughs> yeah, we took the nuts off the backside, had all these on, and I was figuring, okay, well, it should just come off then. Well, no, it had bolts that were underneath, threaded into there. Oh, great. I do have a starter back here. It's encased in that box. It's all riveted shut. Okay, I got two screws there. It might give me access. I don't know if this plate's gotta come off. There are four bolts to take it off. Let me just knock them bolts off, make it easy. Okay. I don't wanna make it any harder than it needs to be. Learning as we go. Where's Michael Knight when you need him? He knows all about kit. Clock washer's about junk. I mean, <laughs> that looks pretty reusable. Ready? Are we attached there yet? Something. What the heck is that? Fly back in so you can down. Did not see that one way down underneath there. It'd be easier just to number them and uh, what do you think? Number them and cut them. Well, that wire's in great shape. <laughs> I should not be able to cut that casing with my finger now. I wonder how many kangaroo power this guy's got. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to cut right in between the tapes. Okay, now I think we might be free. There we go. Looks like a little mini transmission sticking off the back. It, it does. Yeah, really. <laughs> All right, I'm not sure who's gonna reinstall that, but not I have it. not a clue how it came off, so. <laughs> yeah. But here it is. We did take some good pictures and we labeled everything. Yeah. Because we're responsible mechanics. Yeah, it's very simple. The only thing I really didn't care to do would be cut that harness, but under the circumstances, it goes too many different places where I'd have to uh, label everything. I thought it was just easier. And you'd have that. to cut, one of these you had to cut anyway, right? One of the red wires you were going to have to cut even if you tried to yeah. pull it off. So Yeah, yeah there were three wires into one connector and it just didn't make sense to do all that. Now all this is probably going to get redone at some point. So, And honestly, I believe this would be for what would be the stator, if I remember correctly. So that might get replaced anyway. So, But we'll go ahead and see when we go to do the overhaul and reinstall. So Nice. So I think now what, we vapor home the exhaust? Yep, get the exhaust all cleaned up and uh, get that ready for a fresh coat of something. I'm not sure what we'll put on it yet, but, or we might not even use that exhaust. Yeah. We might end up with something cool. I don't know yet. Yeah. We might as we well at least see what I can talk Jason into. Maybe a little FMF fatty on there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> something maybe cool. Swap with like a Hayabusa or something. <laughs> That'd be pretty wild. I mean, that would this be experimental. Let's get crazy with it. <laughs> All right, so we're at least going to clean that up because we love using the Vapor Honey machine and it I makes know. things awesome. <laughs> so we got the exhaust here. Kind of a big honking piece, but we're going to throw it in that Vapor Honey and see what we can make it look like.
Looks pretty good. Yeah. It's crazy how much. Not bad for as ugly as it looked. Yeah, for real. It's crazy <laughs> how much of that rust and all that just gunk it got off. It always amazed me how quick steel will rust when it's bare and wet. That's a matter of seconds till I got it dry. Yeah, for and real. You, you literally, yeah, you pulled it out, rinsed it off, and started blowing compressed air on it. Not too bad. It's pretty good. Now that we have the tube, it's time to head back to the hangar and get that Seneca all fixed up. I was just talking to Sam a minute ago and he said this was because of a steve landing yes it was i don't i don't know i i think we're gonna probably take the tire uh you know the tube out i, well, I think sam's gonna take the tube out i'll bet you any money when that tube comes out i think the tube will be pinched and it'll be worn on the sidewall from probably from a little under inflation my I'm, bet i'm betting it's a valve stem uh, oh, you know what? I did see that the tube is in a little crooked because the valve stem yeah, I think it's isn't valve stem straight out. We will see. And it broke. Yeah, and it's hard to say. But um, so Steve and Sam have been flying. You know, Steve is Sam's son, and you guys know he has awesome landings. He always does have awesome landings. So, but they said because the Seneca. I mean, if, if you look at it, it's like a foot and a half off the ground. This thing's low. Yes, it is. It's like really low. So I can imagine you come in and getting ground effect. You think it's down, but you're two, three feet above the runway. So it's all of a been, sudden it stops flying and it plops down. Yeah. yeah. Steve and I have not had good landings in this lately, but yeah. this was a Steve landing. I got it. I got it. Hey, but Jason, guess what? We kept it on the runway. You kept it on the runway, even with a flat tire. Like something to look for. That valve stem is kicked back about 40 degrees, maybe 30 degrees. That thing should be straight out. So that means that tube is in there putting constant pressure on the on the uh, back side of the stem here so we'll see we'll get it apart we'll look at it um went and picked up a new tube yesterday over forward arrow and uh you know this thing will be good to go and you guys got some practice like ils to do and stuff like that and some yeah. practice landings to <laughs> try to get this a little better I, I can't i can't comment because i haven't flown it or flown in it with you yet so but it is so low to the ground so get this thing jacked up, you can change that tube. All right. Unfortunately, I've changed a few tires over the years. <laughs> so after getting the tube out of the tire, we noticed it doesn't seem to be, uh, actually, it's, it's hard to tell. I can't tell if that's a crack or not. But yeah. one thing I can tell you is, I, I, I don't know about you guys, but whenever I do a tube on anything, I learned way back in the day with bicycle tires, you got to put plenty of powder in there because this thing is constantly rubbing on the tire one way or the other on the inside. The only thing that keeps it from being abrasive is this nice white powdery stuff. So um, this one, not very powdery. You can see right here it's been chafing on the sidewall for sure and the only powder we got is worn rubber from the friction of this tube and the tire so not good it's also one of the reasons you definitely want to check your air pressure all the time check your manual make sure it's right because it will chafe like this i have a feeling we're going to put air in it and, and there's going to be some leakage from this chafing so yeah to get some air in this let's find out for sure where the leak's coming from and uh, learn from this a little bit. Right. All right, so we found the leak here. There's a little pinhole. But if you guys look right here, there's a heavy friction area here. So I, I can tell you from my experience, it's a combination of a low tire and, and not enough powder in there to keep it from chafing. I mean, it creates a ton of heat right here. And eventually, something's going to give. Well, the 
the tube in this instance, you know, did give. So, um, you know, ever since my little thing with flat tires, I've, <laughs> I've kind of like been making sure I learn as much as possible about it because uh, it's just some simple stuff. Make sure tire changed, you need to get some friction out of there. And when you're, when you have an airplane changing weather, that's a little bit of air. There's not much air in here volume wise. So a little bit of temperature makes a huge fluctuation, uh, you know, in your tires. So check them regularly, pre-flight, visually look at them, you know, check the air pressure and save yourself some headaches. I was looking at how I'm going to install this spring and because the housing that the housing that this is encased in or protected by, I, I don't want to remove it. It's, it's a lot of screws and I'd have to remove it so I could slide it kind of on this spring and get both sides of the cable hooked up. So what I decided to do, I'm going to crawl under, I'm going to unhook this left side so then I have as much slack as I want. I'll get this spring installed in this housing here and then we'll go ahead and we'll reattach it over here. The other side I have to install this new tube because the other one, well, if you see, it's got some corrosion on it. So, uh, so we, we didn't want to use that one. So I'm going to install the new tube over on the right side. And when I install this one, I'm not going to put the screws in so it can move. It'll be a lot easier to put in and I won't have to detach the cable. That also gives me a chance to check out that front bell crank, make sure it's all good, which I think it was because I think I inspected it when we had the front end out. But anyway, gonna take another look at it and make sure everything's good to go up there and it'll make installing this a lot easier. Needle nose pliers would have been quicker. I just didn't feel like going to getting them. <laughs> so, flathead screwdriver and a strong finger is just as effective. All right, so we got this left side all installed. I'm going to wait to hook up that turnbuckle until we get the right side in. Um, yeah, it was a little bit easier than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, so I'm just going to go ahead. I mean, there's a, there's some light corrosion. I think there's enough we can sand it off. And then uh, you know, we'll go ahead and sink it up. And we'll use this one because it does have the rubber insulation in there, which pads the spring. And that one doesn't. So if you guys can look, this came out of the 402. We were going to use this because there's no corrosion on the tube. But if you look in there, there is no, it's like a rubber padding almost. And you can see there's some ridges in it from where the spring was vibrating in there. And that's why it's supposed to have that rubber liner in there. Uh, it gives that spring some cushion so it doesn't vibrate and damage the tube. So, uh, so we're gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna sand this, this surface corrosion off and then we're gonna throw some zinc on it and we're gonna use the original tube because it has a good liner in there. And uh, I could see, you know, not having that liner creating some problems. If you get ridges that eats through this tube in the inside, that spring could start catching and it's not gonna move smoothly, and that's the last thing that we want, so. It's not structural, so I think we'll be just fine. Yeah, as far as some of the corrosion, it'll sand right off. So if you guys are wondering, this is pretty much like a scotch right pad at a really high rpm so it's not digging into this piece but it will just go over it and it'll save your hands a lot of pain in comparison to like hand sanding the whole thing but you still got a hand sand anyway that.
All right, so we got the pedals installed, all buttoned up and ready to go. So now once Jason's done up front, we should have a rudder and steering. All right, so now that we got this painted, I'm gonna go ahead and get it installed and get the rest of the stuff, including the spring and all these cables hooked up and that should complete this whole steering job and the rudder. Hopefully now when we push the pedals, it goes the right way. We'll see. You grab me the uh, flathead screwdriver over there. Pedal was pushed which way? I had them centered again. Can you push the left pedal in? Perfect. Screw those in. All we gotta do then is get the turnbuckles tightened up and this job should be done. This cable back here runs through this tube that the spring sits in and then hooks this cable comes down and it goes through this pulley which keeps it aligned. It has like a little keeper in there. We got that pulley all set, all greased. It is perfect. Comes through the fuselage here. And then it comes down out of there and hooks to that bell crank right there, which then steers the front end. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna get that all hooked up and all set. And then all of the control cables besides the trim stuff is all done. So it's just like a push pull on the cable on both sides going to a, into a spring, onto a bell crank, and that's what gives you your articulating steering in the front and it works in unison with the rudder. And those springs, like I had mentioned earlier, give some, it, it, it has some give, so if you hit something, the spring springs and you don't snap a cable. That's good. All right, so I'm back in the tail of a 401 and these are the two turnbuckles to the rudder that I'm gonna tighten up. Once these are tightened up, everything should be snug, everything should operate correctly. Now, once all this is rigged, there's tensions you have to set, there's all kinds of different things you do. All this gets safety wired in place, but the tensions do have to be set. We're not gonna do that now, that's a whole sequence. It's, it takes days to do the whole gear retract system, all the flight controls and everything like that. So that's gonna be a later date. Don't know if that'll even be on camera because it's just really tedious, uh, you know, work. So, but for now, we'll get these tightened up. I'll get out of this tail and we'll see if everything works. Work it like a Peloton, baby. Like a Peloton. <laughs> <laughs> the pedals are all painted up. They look really, really good. Um, looks brand new. I can just picture this with like new carpet down here, new side panels all painted up, nice new lit up switches, just everything new. And those pedals, those pedals are gonna look just perfect. So let's go ahead. We're gonna see, <laughs> we're gonna see if everything steers the right way and make sure everything's right. If we installed all this correctly, when I hit the right pedal, it should make it turn right, which would turn the, the steering, turn the front, turn the tire to the right, and it would turn the rudder to the right, no, to the left, correct? Yeah, sure. <laughs> all right, here we go, ready? So 
so it, is it working? Yeah. Yeah! All right. We got success, I think. Yeah. Nice, awesome. And it's like in here, it is so freaking smooth. Like it's, it's like really smooth. All right, so <laughs> the rudder, the rudder in the steering works and I, does it work the right direction? I think so. All right, anyway, so I, I know it works anyway. Hopefully we don't have to fly with the pedals the other way around when we're flying and steer with it the other way around when we're on the ground. Either way, it's all hooked up and everything is right. Um, we do have a lot more work to do to this thing yet, but man, it is one more thing down and that's a big job. If you guys have never done it, that's a huge job. It takes a lot of time and there's a lot of figuring. All brand new hardware, every, it feels so good. It feels better than any other airplane that I've actuated because it's pretty much new. We got a lot done this week. Uh, we were able to, able to help Sam with the Seneca, you and Sam then, when I was gone, I didn't know they were gonna do this, took the engine off the kit box and uh, looked like you guys had fun. So it's been an adventure. It has. And giving away that Austin, finally getting to do that, that was so much fun. I mean, that was like a year and a half in the making. So yeah. And next, we got a Mustang to give away too. We got so much work to do. Yeah, so go buy some merch. Yeah. Get entered in that giveaway. Absolutely, or, or Joe's gonna drive away in it. That's okay. <laughs> Take care. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Catch you next time.